What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Fleeky Friday. Today, we're standing in front of Diagostino's Trattoria, an Italian cuisine, couple-owned restaurant, which I love. We're gonna go inside, meet the chefs, and they're gonna teach us how to make the perfect Italian dish. I can't wait to show you. Let's go. So first, tell me how did Diagostino start? What's the story behind the name and the restaurant? So Diagostino is my mother's maiden name. We're basically paying tribute to that side of the family. My, my ancestry, the Diagostinos, came from southern Italy, Calabria, settled in upstate New York. And uh, that's where most of our rich family history comes from and the traditions and, and the food, of course. Um, the importance of family and, and faith and, and things like that. Uh, of course, my dad played a huge role in those uh, things as I grew up as well. This is my ancestry, this is the Diagostino side. Um, and the Rosa side comes in uh, due to some, some weddings. This is my great-grandfather Giovanni Diagostino and my great-mother, my great-grandmother Santa. Um, he came over, this is their 50th wedding anniversary by the way. Um, he came over as a 20-year-old in 1903, um, settled in upstate New York uh, and wound up uh, being a groundskeeper for a very uh, wealthy family that lived in the area called Canandaigua. Um, ironically, their last name was Thompson, <laughs> which comes into play long, many, many years later when my mother and my father met in high school in San Diego and his last name is Thompson. Um, hers being Diagostino, and wow. my great-grandfather Diagostino worked for a Thompson family in Canandaigua as their groundskeeper, and they were um, very, very good people. They were very uh, charitable and uh, philanthropic. They built hospitals up there. As far as how it relates to the restaurant, Diagostino's was, was a natural name for us to come up with to keep us uh, always present and thinking about uh, those family traditions and treating people like family. You guys absolutely deliver. I remember leaving this place and being like so happy. Everything was so good and I love that I could see you guys working. The staff is so friendly and you guys seem like a family um, together, which is awesome. We can feel the vibe. Yeah. And we, we can come around the corner and come out and talk about the menu or, you know, figure out what's going on um, and turn around any situation. One of my favorite aspects of the restaurant is we want to make sure that everyone's time is unique. And I was raised in a family that instilled the importance of giving versus receiving. So as cliche as it sounds, the happiness that I receive from a guest coming in and saying, oh, it's our birthday, and making sure that they have their best birthday yet, or it's their graduation from college, or a new job, whatever the occasion, or circumstance, even if it's just a night out, we want to make sure that they have that best time. Um, and we try to do little things here and there, you know, uh, if it's something as simple as getting rid of a dessert and knowing that a, a huge magnitude of guests want that back. We'll not only bring it back, but we'll name it after one of our guests. Uh, for a guest that maybe is suffering some health complications and is unable to join us uh, for dinner regularly, we want to go that extra step and we want to create a menu that they can eat so they can't, you know, uh, make the decision to say, hey, look, I can't go there because they don't have options for me. We want to make sure that we take care of our guests as much as we're taking care of the preparation of our food. So they had eight children. Um, most of them are here in this photo, this wedding picture. So these are my great aunts and uncles on the Diagostino side. Weddings and weddings and weddings. This is my mom as a flower girl here. One of my great She's aunts' so weddings. Cute. Um, I like to think that they're watching over me and make sure I don't screw anything up. But <laughs> <laughs> I spend all the time in the kitchen with my mother. Um, my dad can cook. He's he's a great cook, but. My mother was a teacher, so she would get home earlier in the day than he did. And um, so she would typically be the ones that uh, prepared their meals during the week. And I was always in the kitchen with her. I remember when I was little, she, she had a little step stool um, in front of the stove uh, so that I could step up and see what she was doing and kind of watch and stir stuff and, and things like that. So my mom was my first culinary mentor, yeah. And how did you two meet? So I was... Uh, about halfway through 
my culinary program and looking for a place to do my externship. You can't finish the program, graduate, get your degree um, until you complete a six month externship with an approved chef. So I was looking for a place to do my externship and I found Red Rock Country Club uh, to be a, a very good fit for me. I went up there and I, I was able to get my externship locked up and during the course of my time there, uh, Brandy was also working there. She was working in the front of the house doing, you know, serving and banquets and things like that, special events. And uh, that's how we met. We were, we were working together at Red Rock Country Club back in like 2009. And, uh, Over time, we both just kept getting promoted. I started off as a full-time front of the house server, then I was the banquet, banquet captain, then I went to banquet manager, then I was the food and beverage director, and he ended up getting promoted to Siena Golf Club um, as the executive chef. And one day when he came back up the stairs to turn in his invoices to the human resources, that's at Red Rock, that's where the human resources was. And I saw him and I was like, should I tell him I'm single? Something just made me go over there and say, I'm single. <laughs> then he asked me to the dog park. Oh, that's so cute. And I said, I don't have a dog. And he said, we can share mine. <laughs> so yeah, I took her out on a proper date. We, we went up going to uh, uh, Natalia's secret mm -hmm. kitchen. Um, okay found out years later after we bought the restaurant even uh, that she likes to come here. Uh, oh, the really? first time she walked in, we were like, Natalia's here. <laughs> She's here. And yeah, and this since- This is a Thai place, right? Yeah. Place. Since then, we've, we've become very good friends, but uh, that's where I took her because I, I figured they have a lot of different kind of food and, um, you know, small plates, we could try a lot of different stuff. And, you know, uh, I remember asking her, uh, if she had any food allergies or, you know, if there wasn't anything that she didn't like. And she's like, well, I'm not on a diet. Um, I'll eat pretty much anything and I don't like olives. I'm like... I've never had olives. Never had You've olives. never had an olive? Never had oh my olives. gosh. Okay. <laughs> the first time I met his mom, um, she had thousands of olives on her counter drying out from the tree. And I came and she goes, help yourself to all the olives. And I was like, I don't like olives. <laughs> And she went, she gave me the look. <laughs> You're like, sorry. But it's okay. Yeah. We have, we have a very unique and special dynamic, yeah. you know, Brandy and I. There, there probably aren't a lot of couples that could spend the amount of time together that we do at work and at home and, uh, and you know, dealing with the stress and, you know, the business side of the administrative side of things and staffing issues and you know all that stuff we're just best friends you know we really that's where our underlying um, passion is, is is for providing that environment and that experience for people treating them like they're members of our own family so when they walk through that that front door they, they feel like they're home and and of course the you know the food and the service and all that stuff play a part too but it's something we we never get tired of ravioli time ravioli time <laughs> let's do it let's go dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's ravioli party time yeah, i got my own apron i feel so professional monique has been invited to join us for the ravioli party today is it a party every it's every weekend? always a party all right i feel like this fits great with my dress so I just cut these out, make sure that they're like the size of the tray. And okay. And I just put like roller in there. Cute. Yeah. And then. Is this so, the filling dish? Yes. Looks so, so good. Dan makes that. Um, it's three cheeses, ricotta, parmesan, and pecorino. And then a little bit of parsley. And that's it. It's like super simple. I mean, especially with like the sauces and everything that we do, I feel like they like stand out on their own. Yeah. Need too much extra. And then sometimes you guys add like mushrooms or something to yeah. make it a special. We have like different types. Um, the wild mushroom one he did, he just blended up like all the wild mushrooms and then that was the filling and then we did a Parmesan infused sauce. Ooh. So it was like really just like simple things in there with like complex sauces, which is cool. Wow. So right now, um, I have to leave like a little gap in here, but I'm just trying to like tuck them in and perfect them so that they like look like perfect little circles and they seal up nice. Okay. So once they get all sealed, 
<laughs> and you were saying Chef Dan taught you everything you need to know? Yes, yeah. Aww. I mean, from making the dough to like getting into like the raviolis, like I didn't know any of the steps. And for right now, I'm the only one that makes the dough for them. So it's like kind of cool. But I mean, I love making the raviolis too. And it's like a fun thing to tell the guests too. They're like, oh, what are the raviolis? I'm like, I made them today. Yeah. They're three cheese. Like. That's so cool. You make the, you make the dough from scratch? Yes. Yep. So yeah, wow. like Dan said, there's a, a bunch of eggs, two different types of flowers. One of them is like from Italy uh -huh. um, that we import fresh. And yeah, you just put it all together and mix it up and the next day it turns into beautiful raviolis. <laughs> smells so good too. Love this thing. This thing, Ooh. it's like a little crimper to put the shape into that. That's cute. And you just push it in nice. That looks great. Yeah. And then more flour? Yes. What's the flour for technically? Um, so the dough gets kind of sticky. So when there's flour on it, it helps to dry it out so it doesn't stick to the table. It doesn't stick to like the metal tray that it's going on. Got it. So flour helps with that. Yeah, nice good press. They look so good. Oh my god, it happens so fast. Yeah. Wow. And then we just give them out a little outline here. Cut off all the extras on the outside of the Great. Oh my God, I'm getting so hungry just smelling it. <laughs> Cannot wait. And then what's the cook time usually? Like five, six minutes? Yeah, normally about that long. Just pop them in, warm them up, and then put them in the sauce to coat them all up and flake them. Wow, they look beautiful. Yeah. This right is like nerve wracking. Yeah. I don't want to mess up the ravioli. They're so beautiful. Okay. Ooh, it gets hot in here too. Yeah. In the back. <laughs> okay. Got it. And then roll it all up. Ah! Oh my god, I definitely messed that up. Okay, let's see. <laughs> this is hard. Yeah. See, like, how do you get the little things not to do that? Um, it's just hard with like the edge of it, but you know, the easy part of that is like you can just cut it off on the end, and then it looks perfect anyway. Oh, okay. You just get those little extra crunchies off. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna try that too. Really, the whole yeah. whole process. This is fun. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is what my Sunday afternoons consist of. Hold on, the thing on the outside. <laughs> All right, here we go again. <gasps> that was so cool. Okay. There I go again, messing up the corner. They're happy accidents, right? Yes. So this this seals everything? Yep. So like what I'm doing when I press them okay. down like seals the edges and then that like just gives them kind of the little prettiness that they need. Okay, let's see. The yeah. prettiness is very important. Yeah, prettiness <laughs> is. And they're ready to be cooked. Ooh. Okay. Wait, I'm gonna That's scoop it. one. Yeah. See. <laughs> Momo's ravioli. Voila! Your family now. <laughs> They're gonna like take them all after and be like, all right, we need to fix them. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Okay, That's perfect. That. So we just so happen to have fresh out of the oven our homemade lasagna bolognese here. Ooh. I've been told by many who consume this that it's world class. Looks many world class. Woo! possibly the best ever. Uh, so there's three layers there. Uh, the three cheese filling is standard um, with the ravioli, the lasagna, the cannellonis. It's just a matter of what other ingredients we decide to put with it. So we've got the ricotta, um, the pecorino romano, the parmesan reggiano, some herbs, some spices, um, our house-made bolognese sauce in between the layers, fresh egg pasta. Um, and this is our, yeah, so I wanted to show you that because it yeah. just so happened to be on ravioli day that we <laughs> made lasagna too. How about that? I think it's really important too to note that uh, through this process, the staff is really involved in everything. Um, and part of that is education. We're kind of the gateway from the back of the house to the front of the house so that we can share this experience with everybody. The more that we know from process to ingredients, uh, to timetables, the better we can relay that information so that we can make your time just as magical as everyone else's. And consistency is such a key element of what we do. 
because everyone can create a great meal, but can they do it repetitively so that every single time your favorite meal that you come in is gonna be just as great as the first time. So in this pan, we have three ounces of reduced heavy cream. Um, we reduce the heavy cream ahead of time uh, for our cream sauces. Um, basically taking heavy cream and reducing it first to where it's like a sauce consistency already. Um, that just saves us time and cooking time, which a, a couple minutes uh, when you're busy is a lifetime back yeah. here. Three ounces of reduced heavy cream, a little salt, kosher salt, and six ounces of our house-made Pomodoro, which is just a you know simple tomato sauce. Um, the Pomodoro is kind of a base for a lot of the other sauces that we do, or marinaras and arrabbiatas and puttanescas and uh, alla matriciana and all the other red sauces um, derived from the original uh, mother sauce, the Pomodoro. So as the sauce is kind of coming down to consistency here, what we mean by consistency is we're looking for that sauce to be able to coat the pasta, um, not being too runny. The past six months, Dan has taught me how to cook, like really. He's a great teacher. It sounds strange, but my favorite thing is the pink vodka sauce. Just because I get it right every time. <laughs> hey, I love it. Humility. <laughs> no. It's super simple, but it comes out perfect every time. I only like to make things that I'm good at. <laughs> the other things I leave up to Dan. Um, Brandy is our dessert pastry chef. Uh, she's the queen of... <laughs> Cheesecake and tiramisu. If you've That's ever been favorite. here, if you haven't been here, uh, you can't be house-made cheesecake, house-made tiramisu. I've also been told by many that it's world-class and probably the best in Las Vegas. So um, another reason to come by and see us at D's. Uh, we're gonna add our vodka. So we're making pink vodka sauce. We're gonna add our vodka. Quite a bit there. Ooh. Wow. <clears throat> So we're burning off the alcohol. This is called flambe. Similar uh, technique to doing like bananas foster or any of the cognac sauces or anything like that. Uh, Marsala even. Um, you're using uh, high, high uh, alcohol spirits or um, aperitifs or wines or whatever to flavor your sauce. Um, what this does is it kind of burns the alcohol off, but it leaves the sugar behind. Okay. So uh, it's not you're not going to taste the vodka, but you're going to if you if you were to have the sauce without it, it would just be a little less sweet, um, which helps kind of offset um, the nuttiness of the parmesan. So we're trying to balance flavor here, as well as do layers of flavor. So you've got cream, you've got pomodoro, you've got a little sugar from the vodka. You've got fresh egg pasta, you've got three cheeses in there that are nice. Uh, all together, the complete bite is, is really phenomenal. All right, so the ravioli is in now. See how nice the, the sauce is coating that pasta now. Oh, it's beautiful. Vodka sauce, my favorite. So you can do, I have, I have variations of this um, that are really cool. So uh, one of our customers likes to do the bolognese, but she likes it pink vodka bolognese. So you can do that. So basically you have the pink vodka sauce, add some bolognese to it, and it becomes a pink, pink vodka bolognese. So you got some meat, you know, the hardiness of the meat sauce in there too. You could also make it spicy. Um, I have pepperoncini, I have Calabrian peppers in house, plus the, the chili flake. Um, so you can do spicy if you want. Um, I love spicy. You got mushrooms, you got prosciutto, some people like to add peas to the pink sauce. And again, one of the great things about the Agostinos is that we don't make anything until you order it. So if you want to customize a dish, by all means, if I have the ingredients to do it, um, I'm happy to do so. All right, we're ready to plate. I'm sure a lot of people say, I want this without this. That's uh -huh. <laughs> Lay these nicely. More cheese, why not? <laughs> Never have enough cheese. Fresh parsley. Uh, no, we're done. 
And I know you guys have a wine collection as well. So did you curate that? Yes. We all work together on the wine list. Um, so of course we have to taste everything, make sure it's good. Um, <laughs> again, if we don't like it, we can't sell it. So um, most restaurants have like a house wine and a high-end wine, but we start right in the middle. Like we don't have like a house wine. All our wines are really good. <laughs> so things to keep in mind when doing pairings is you really want something that's not gonna be overpowering or easily overwhelmed. So you gotta find the right body, you gotta find the right flavors. Also, while keeping in mind other people's palates, because not everyone is gonna have those same cravings, the same flavors that they're looking for. So we're gonna be doing three different varietals of wine that could all match with this and highlighting different aspects, whether it's the nuttiness of the Parmesan, the sweetness of the tomatoes, um, or the all-encompassing flavor of the little touches that go along. So if it were me, we'll start lightest bodied and we'll go to most full bodied. So this first one that we're gonna be working with is gonna be a Pinot Noir out of Oregon. Uh, the Willamette region is really, really well known for um, their Pinot Noirs, their grapes, and all of the rainfall that they get. Um, so this is gonna be the Purple Hands out of Lone Creek Ranch. This is one of my favorite and probably one of the most underrated wines on our wine list that we prepare. Um, you're gonna get a lot of cherry. You're gonna get a lot of lighter fruits uh, off the nose like currant. Um, the middle one right here is probably gonna be the richest, um, but the most uh, unique meritage. Uh, so this one is going to be a blend by Ferrari Carano. This is gonna be the Sienna. Um, we brought this on last winter, and in my opinion, it is kind of the cure-all for the problem in the industry, which is known as Orrin Swift's Prisoner. Uh, everybody loves it, um, but it's, in my opinion, it's too rich, too sweet, so it's really, really hard to blend that with food. This is gonna be a big-bodied Cab Zin blend, uh, so you're gonna get really rich fruits. You're gonna get chocolate, you're gonna get um, coffee. coffee, you're gonna get cocoa, you're gonna get plum, uh, you're gonna get pomegranate. So that's gonna pick up really, really nice notes and complement um, the saltiness on this dish. See the then, tannins too, I took one. Oh, totally, uh, you can kind of see something. it rimming all around <laughs> yeah. this glass. And these prism-shaped glasses are great because depending upon where you fill it up, they're gonna be perfect for any type of varietal, whether it's white or red. Last but not least, we wanted to go a little bit classic. This is gonna be Decoy by Duckhorn. This is their Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, very, very classic. You're gonna go lighter body because it is out of Sonoma, so you're not gonna get those traditional, really rich, dry grapes out of Napa, um, but really highlighting all those flavors that you're gonna look for in a cab. So the pasta is gonna provide the juiciness and the dryness of the cab is really gonna be a nice compliment to that. I tried the Decoy, I love. Boy, I have not tried these two. I yeah, like the, these are great. the art on this one. Oh, this one's fantastic. Kind of reminds me of um, Cast Away, those golden wings that he finds that save his life. So, mm -hmm. so wine first or food first? Um, definitely think? food first, first, in my okay. opinion. I'm a food first kind of guy. If I burn myself, it's your fault. <laughs> As she sears off all her taste buds. All right, here we go. Wow, that's so creamy. So good. I need one more bite. And you can literally see the cheese, the sauce, so good. The temperature's perfect, too. Mm. Let's see. That's good. I like that a lot. I would love that. That was this one. Life. So good. It really does pair well with the ravioli. We have a very special and precious gift that we can bring happiness to people one person at a time. Mm -hmm. It was his insight really that, that kind of helped me bring it all together, you know. And I, and I know that all the, the family experience and everything that I have, it, it's nice to be able to share those traditions with people and, and that they feel like they're members of our family too. Um, it's great. The passion helps sell. Yeah. You know, you can and then the passion for sure. when the guests try whatever we create that week, this week we had chicken Florentine cannellonis with pomodoro and Alfredo sauce with some baked mozzarella. 
super simple, but it's different yeah. and everybody just loves it. So I just like making things people love. I mean, <laughs> what? Because this episode will be coming out this Friday. So what will the special be this week? So this week I'm working on some short rib. Um, I may do it two ways. I may do uh, a braised short rib cannelloni and then also just a braised short rib dish as an entree um, with, some, with some starch and some vegetable. Um, product is already here. Uh, just gonna try to spend some time with it and, and, and see how I can uh, make presentation on it and, and things like that. Work on my brajol recipe for Mother's Day. Um, we haven't done brajol yet, and a lot of people have been asking for it for a couple of years now. <laughs> and it's just—it's not that I didn't want to do it or anything, and, or that I didn't know how. It's just that um, I just don't think about it. You know, they ask, "Oh, can you make brajol?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course." You know, and then you know, a week goes by, and I'm like, "Oh, what's the special?" This week? You know, so I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna try to roll that out on Mother's Day for the first time. I think it'll be nice. If you don't have your reservation by Wednesday night probably not going to get in for the weekend. But we do take a wait list. And when people cancel, we just go down the wait list and make the phone calls. Go to our website and sign up for our email newsletter, www.dagostinoslv.com. That's D-A-G-O-S-T-I-N-O-S-L-V.com. And you'll be enrolled to receive our weekly newsletter where I let everybody know, you know, what's the soup going to be this week? What's the special this week? What are we doing different? You said the Sienna was like pomegranate vibes. That's going to be the richest. So you're going to get like the cocos. You're going to get a little bit of pepper from the zen that's in there. You're going to get a lot of uh, pomegranate. Ooh. I think I like that one better. Oh, for sure. That one's really good. And it comes down to like what type of body do you want to pair a lighter body wine with it, sweeter body wine with it, full wow. body rich. So this one was the Sienna. This is a Pinot? No, that is a red blend. Red, red blend. Meritage. So this one is so far my favorite. I've tried the decoy, but now that I get to compare it, let's see. Last one. There's a glass for you, Logan, as well. Let's see. I think that one's my favorite. Feels like home a little it bit. Feels like home. <laughs> this one's so good. It just—it's light. It's a cab. I love cab. I guess cabs aren't supposed to be light, but to me, they are. So cab should be probably one of the more full-bodied domestic classic varietals, but then you can end up with things like this. So this is a brand new one that I just brought in. I try to take into consideration who is coming and what the times of the year are. So while this Ferrari Crown of Siena is great, as the temperature and the weather changes from, you know, 60 degrees at dinner to, you know, soon in the summer, it's gonna be 100 degrees at dinner. You can't always do the same ones. Yeah. So this is gonna be a same type of grape. Okay, I need one more bite now. Yeah, absolutely. I Same missed type it. of grape, but just totally different winemaking process. And this is going to be the auctioneer cab out of Napa. Mm, this is so good. It's, it is so crazy how these makers can take the same type of grape and just instill a completely different process and extract new flavors and different body in, in the mouth. It's crazy. Like to me, it looks so dark, but it's going to drink so light. So when it's 100 degrees out, you can drink cab. Wow, that one's That's really good. Brand new for the season we just brought. That all right, out. the auctioneer. I'm all into labels, and so this stuff makes me super happy. How beautiful this label is! It's the broken nail for me. <laughs> wow, I don't know. I think it, for me, it's between decoy and auctioneer. Well, the the decoy is is an easy drinking cap. Yeah. Um, and and people, I mean that people just love that one. It's 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 just easy to drink and and, and it's enjoyable. Um, in the Duckhorn Estate portfolio, um, they have a Cabernet called Canvasback okay. that is more like, like the Quintessas or the you know uh, the Justin Cabs. You know they're they're comparable to those um, those big big cabs. Yeah. You know, um, but they're completely different. You know, so for someone that likes to just enjoy a cab, you know. The, the, the decoy is really nice, but um, 
but they have the, the canvas back is really phenomenal too. It's so good that you could eat it with dessert. You wow. could, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. I love dessert. I always have a dessert stomach, no matter how full I am. I always find room for dessert. So, but this was this was so phenomenal. Thank you so much. Oh my, my gosh. My pleasure. So good. You guys need a glass. I want to cheers you guys. Sure. So thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Where's Brandy? Brandy. Chris, come do your favorite hobby. <laughs> She comes. Drinking wine. I want to thank you guys for this amazing meal. This has been phenomenal. It's so much fun hanging out with you guys. She's like, I want all the wine. Thank you. Cheers. Salud.